Hello Taurus, welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. For this round of readings, I've been pulling a card from the Surrealist Tarot deck as the sort of overall energy or starting point. And you got the Ten of Wands. And this is traditionally, it's a Virgo card, but um, I think it's very appropriate for you, Taurus, and actually, you know, kind of all the Earth signs. We've been in a very heavily Earth period of time. Um, a, right, a very materialist, not, and I don't mean in the sense of people wanting to own a lot of stuff. I mean, that is a, that is a component, the, the equating of success with, you know, a certain level of uh, material holding, right? How much do you have? Or using material things in order to fill holes in the self. But also materialist in the sense of how we see the world. So that, you know, physical stuff and physical action is it. Right? What you see is what you get. Um, and you, spirit and, and matters of the, the mind and the emotions are not as important as the physical world. In fact, they might even not exist. Right? There, were, there are people who will tell you that we're not really conscious, that, that it's all an illusion. That, you know, the world is kind of progressing from the big bang to the end, you know, everything is, is moving um, in a predetermined way, right? Then we live in the sort of determinist society or, or, or universe, um, that we live in a universe that's based on these very physical laws that cannot be changed. And even in the quantum world, Right, the, the many worlds theory, right? This idea that, that we can reconcile quantum effects by saying, well, everything happens everywhere, right? Everything will happen eventually, right? So there's all these other universes that pop into existence every time a choice is made. And that reconciles the idea that, you know, maybe particles are choosing. Right? We don't, you know, that's, that's airy-fairy New Age crap, right? We don't want to, we have no truck with that. Um, you know, the, right, the physical is what matters. Um, medicine is based around that. Uh, government is based around that. How we deal with other countries, right? You have to, um, you know, show force towards somebody else if you're having a problem with them. So we've been living in this very, you know, sort of everything is, is material, um, kind of a, a world, a society, at least here in the modern world. And I think that this has put an enormous amount of weight on the earth element and on those who walk around with a heavy um, or a large earth presence in their chart, right? Whether that's Taurus, Capricorn, or Virgo. So I think that you've been, that you've been carrying this weight, Taurus, and maybe you didn't even know that you've been carrying this weight. As if you were, you know, sort of holding up the world, right? As if you were Atlas holding up the world. We begin with this dedication card. And normally, you know, I've been going on in other signs, readings about, 
you know, the beauty of being a disciple, of being, you know, having discipline for something, of being dedicated, of, you know, being like the grail knights. But I think that you, that Taurus has been dedicated to something that's not working. To seeing this world, right, from this very materialist perspective. And this applies to those of us in the spiritual field, right? You know, we can have all these ideas about, you know, energy and energy medicine, how everything is vibrating and so on and so forth. But once we, you know, when we step out of that mindset, right, and we're just, you know, moving through our regular life, it kind of gets forgotten, right? And we move back into this materialist set. Um, and one can see it, you know, happening in, in various ways currently. So I think that this, there's a dedication and, you know, maybe you think that if you, that if you turn away from this, you know, kind of physical view of things, that it's sort of a betrayal of some kind of your Taurusness, of the physical, of Venus, of, um, you know, that maybe you're, you're saying that the physical doesn't matter, that you're joining up with all those people that want to transcend the physical. But there is a way to hold these things in equality, right? To hold this you know, the beauty, the sensuality of the physical world, right? Of, you know, that, right, like the smell of soil after the rain, right? Or, you know, the feel of, um, you know, water as it pours over your skin, right? Like, you know, how wonderful is that, you know, taking a hot shower um, perhaps after a, a cold night or, you know, after you've done a whole bunch of work and to just, right, like to be there in that hot shower feels so good. And one can hold that and know that the earth and all of her physical wonder is deeply beautiful and deeply important and that you, you know, you can love it deeply. And at the same time, you can turn your face towards Scorpio and understand that the energy underpinnings of all of this, the mental and emotional underpinnings of all of this are just as beautiful and just as important and that you can love them too. That you can reach into that quantum space, right? In order to collapse the waveform in a way that is pleasing to you. And that this is not a betrayal, right? That you're not required, you know, to do it with sweat. that the physical world wants to dance. And here you are, Queen of Stones, looking out of your cave. And, you know, you've been in this cave, you've been holding your position, and you're looking out with longing, with longing for this freer space. Right, because you can see, right, out of your cave, you see this other beings dancing in ecstasy. Other beings moving with joy through this energetic space. 
through this space of emotion and consciousness. Um, right, seeing, using intuition, using all of the senses, right? Not just those that we think of in the physical, the usual five, but other senses too that, you know, reach through into the deeper spaces, into what we call the quantum realms. Because there's such joy there, right? This is where the dance is. You know, the earth dances this way. I, I read somewhere about a study that talked about how plants use quantum effects, right? To, to sort of process in their bodies um, in the best way possible, right? Which, you know, which way should this water travel up the stalk, right? Seeing all of it and then collapsing the waveform in the spot where it works best. I'll have to see if I can find the article that talked about that and link it below in the description. Right, and I'm quite certain, you know, that, it, right, that evolution and change is not, you know, a linear process. Right, that the earth and her inhabitants are frequently using this effect of being able to choose by dipping into that field space to choose timelines, choose paths that are of greatest joy and benefit and beauty. Right, this is a new thing, a new dedication. Right, if you were, you know, sort of dedicated to this materialist uh, philosophy right, in your earthiness, that you can now rededicate yourself to a different view, to one where there is both spirit and matter, where it's a dance. And one can be in both spaces and work in both spaces. And that, you know, this is kind of perhaps how we were meant to travel. I mean, it, it could be that we needed to go through this, right, to come out the other side. That it was a process for us in learning. And that it won't be all of us, right? We're not going to suddenly as an entire 8 billion population flip over into this kind of view. But that you can do it. You can make this choice. right, this page of cups, to rediscover joy and playfulness in your life that has perhaps been too serious, too heavy, with this weight that you've been carrying. To call on the element of air, to learn to move in that electric space. And certainly spirit is calling. Calling, sending, right? Sending this tarot reading, sending possibly other things, right? Maybe books you've been reading or articles or stuff you've been overhearing people, conversations you've been having, all of this stuff coming in. 
on the airwaves. Right. Calling for movement, for uh, freeing up, right? For freeing up your ability to move. Right, for seeing these lines not as like hard tethers, but as energetic lines. Allowing you to shift and move with greater ease and flexibility. Right, page of voices, seeing. Seeing a new vista opening up. Receiving new information. Gaining clarity. And then a different queen of pentacles, this queen of materials, who to me always um, looks like she's daring me. <laughs> Do it, I dare you. Be fabulous. Right? Co-create with the universe in that quantum spiritual space. Start really, right? Start really looking at the world differently. Whatever you remember to. Right? Whenever you remember to remember that the world is not solid. Right? That there is an underlying energy, an underlying quickening and movement, and an underlying consciousness. You know, in my cosmology, everything is conscious, everything. Not just people and trees and animals and natural stuff, but you know, cars and buildings and gum wrappers and plastic bottles. Everything, everything, everything. Everything has consciousness, everything exists in the same way, part of the great field, the great web of all of creation. And that it isn't nearly as solid as it looks. I mean, it isn't even, it's even less solid, you know, than, than scientists who know that everything's vibrating would admit. That reality is much more malleable and changeable than we are brought up to believe. So I think you are, right? You've been looking out of their cave and now I think you are ready to get in your boat. To get in your boat and go. To change your mind, to, to see things differently. And to see things, right, I mean, here, right, Venus, Venus is your planet, your goddess, your energy. To see not only that, you know, there's this energetic underpinning to everything, but that it's love. Right? That it's love and joy. This is what really creates change. Right? Within the world. Is to be able to see the world with love. To look at the world with loving eyes. With Venusian 
sensuality and love and pleasure and ease, right? She's, she's reclining here on her chaise long. That it is not about, right, being rigid, right? Having to, you know, uh, hold up the world. Having to bear this weight. Right, there's this new energy. Right, a, a rekindled passion. You know, the 2023 reading for you, if you're watching this when I'm recording it, was about reclaiming your magic. And, right, that's about this new, this new dedication, this new view. And throwing off the old. <clears throat> right? This is what we're, what we're moving away from, is this, um, this oppression This is the tower in this deck. And sometimes, right, that's what the tower is about, right, it is about breaking down ways that we have oppressed ourselves. Ways that we have restricted and bound ourselves into place. Right, where we've been shouldering too great a burden, too great a responsibility. Is in this self binding. You know, certainly many people in the world, you know, suffer with external oppression. Right, governments and families and all of these things. But many of us have this internal oppression. And I think that in some ways it can be more difficult because it may be unseen. It may disguise itself as, um, as excess discipline or as you know, being responsible. You know, what, right, we have to do this to succeed. We have to do this so that, you know, our family will have enough. We have to do this so that we'll be all right, so that we'll be safe. And so it can be, you know, hard, difficult to throw this off. But I believe that you are doing it. And if you're watching this again, when I'm near when I'm recording it, Uranus has been passing through Taurus. A whole revolution through the physical realm and through your space. Right? Working with Saturn as he passed through Aquarius. And now Saturn will enter Pisces in 2023. And that's more of a working relationship between you and Pisces. So we've right, we've been breaking down. And now we can rebuild in a different way, right? With a sort of a Piscean consciousness. Of the eternal, of the spiritual, of the unseen. And Serpent shows up for that. All right. Scorpio showing up to here. Scorpio is a little bit of the tower as well, right? It's considered Mars energy. So change, flexibility, mystery,
subtext. The serpent is all these things. As well as earthy, right? Animal. And under that is uh, let it go. So here, sort of, and this is a little bit of early advice, we have focus, but in a soft way. Right, this is a sort of a gentle green path to follow. You know, it's not strict or rigid, but beautiful and sensual. And then we have the deer who is a good, right, an earthy vision, but again, more gentle. A loving energy. That isn't right shouldering the whole burden. Now in the full advice camp, we start in the underlying with the eight of swords, and this particular eight of swords, right, is about movement. Right, about cutting through this cloud about breaking through what has uh, been a storm over us, what has uh, clouded over us, what has been weighing on us. And under that is the Queen of Cups, right? heart-based choices, emotional maturity and receptivity Cancer, who is your other sextile on the other side from Pisces. And then we have this Nine of Wands. Cutting away what is not useful any longer. If you've been dedicated to growing something that simply isn't working, stop. We're going to cut it down. Whatever this thing is that you've been growing and nurturing, that's been keeping you imprisoned, we're going to chop it down. And then, and I'm going to show all three of these because they kind of, they are grouping. Empress, the wheel, and the high priestess. These, right, are universal source energies, right? Empress, who is often you, right? Taurus is the empress, right? The, the spirit, right? Venus as mother and creatrix, fecund. Venus and Taurus. And then over here on the other end, the other sort of aspect of Venus energy, receptivity for information, right? This is Venus in Pisces, where she's exalted. Venus receiving spiritual wisdom and understanding. Right, the feminine energies of the tarot. And then the wheel. That's the other half of co-creation. You do your part. And the universe does its part. Source, right? The other the other partner in the dance is source and the universe. who wants to dance with you, right? I mean, here is Source in an ecstatic moment, waiting for you to come out of your cave and dance. And I do think that you are, that you are about to do it, Taurus. 
Um, I mean, currently, if you again, if you're watching this when I'm recording it, we are just a few days, six days from Uranus turning direct in Taurus. So that, right, that may, right, that may help, right, the, the forward movement, that may help you push off the bank. There's been a whole sort of um, turn in this past week, Mars turned direct, Mercury will turn direct on the 18th, and then Uranus on the 22nd. And then there will be in this nice-ish period until April when everything is direct and moving forward. And you can use that energy, Taurus, that forward momentum, the upwelling of energy to help you, right, to, to leave this oppressive space. And I'm right. I'm excited for you, Taurus. I think Taurus um, has so much to offer, so much creativity and imagination and an understanding, right, of that uh, physical realm. You know, what's really going to work? You know, we can we can imagine a thing and think, but will it really work? Right? Will it, will it, you know, be as we think it will in the physical world? And Taurus really has an understanding of these things. So I think that you, right, that you are really going to be moving into your power, Taurus. As you step into this creative space. I wish you all the very best, Taurus, and I will see you next time. So long.